Is a bear derriere really that offensive? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Today we are bringing down the movie ratings board. Oh, controversy. Well, okay, there is a long standing controversy around why movies get the ratings they do. Some really scary, pretty violent movies like Jurassic Park or True Grit, where you see a man literally get his fingers chopped off with a hatchet and then stabbed through the heart. Oh, stabbed through the heart. Through with the, the heart. With the fingers? No. Uh, with a sharp object, get a PG-13 rating, while uh -huh. seemingly innocuous movies like The King's Speech are rated R just because they say a few swear words. Mm. Or as the LA Times once put it, to the MPA ratings board, The King's Speech is just as bad as Saw 3D. It's a bit strange to lump those two uh, together. Right, now do you remember like the first time you saw a movie that wasn't rated R that scared you, that maybe you thought should be rated R? Uh. Well, as you know, as a kid, apparently I didn't watch any movies. Apparently. That, yeah. that would have Decidedly. Me. But Lily recently told me that she was scarred as a child from watching Home Alone. I was like, why? And she said, because of that scene where he like sits down and he's made the mac and cheese, and then he doesn't get to eat it. <laughs> Uh, okay. And I don't think she was completely joking because she's that much into mac well, and cheese. Well, she, she makes great mac and cheese. I recently had it. Yeah. Okay, the MPAA, which is the Motion Picture Association of America, has been around in one form or another since 1922, and the identities of the board members are shrouded in secrecy. But They're we scared. do know that there are eight to 13 members at any given time. They're all parents, and statistically speaking, they seem to have more issues with nudity and profanity than with violence. Mm -hmm. It seems like the whole thing is just a mess and today we're gonna expose it by putting Link on the hot seat. It's time for some movie ratings are iffy at best. Is it worth an R rating if Elmo shows his left breast? The Game Show. That's right, it's the game show that puts the sin in cinema because we're not afraid to go there, sister. Please welcome our first and only contestant, a man who hasn't seen many movies, but only because his mommy wouldn't let him. <laughs> it's Link Neal! Hey, so glad to be here. And reprising her starring role, she's not the queen of the MPAA board, <laughs> but she is the queen of the GMM board, it's Stevie! Oh! Look at that t-shirt. Hello, gentlemen. Get where we can see you, Stevie. <laughs> right here. Right Check there. it out. Right there. Perfect. <laughs> okay, here's how this is gonna go. I'm gonna ask you, Link, a series of questions Female about Female nudity. Most, female nudity, most scandalous, titillating, and head-scratching moments and decisions in movie rating history. And Stevie, AKA the woman with a lovely voice and the great t-shirt, will show you our or your options, and as always, if you guess three or more correctly, you're gonna get a choice between this crisp $1 bill uh -huh. or what's inside the mystery box, which the mystery box is gotten larger. It looks better now, <laughs> you know? There could be a full head in here. You ready to play, Mr. Neal? Yes, I am. First question. While butts and breasts can maintain a PG-13 rating, one of the easiest ways for a film really? to earn the saucy NC-17 rating is full frontal nudity, AKA showing them genitals. Nice. But the MPAA has been known to change an NC-17 rating to an R rating if the filmmakers go back and add a little clever editing and subtlety, whatever that means. Which of these freaky films from the 90s originally had enough nudity to earn an NC-17 rating before changes were made during it, during post-production to bring it down to an R rating. Was it okay. A, Showgirls, or B, 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 b Basic Instinct? Okay, I've never seen Showgirls, but I, I have seen Basic Instinct. I swear it was at your house. I swear you're like, man, I gotta show you something. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Probably. Because I remember the scene, but I mean. The, the scene, huh? The, the, the focal point was just darkness. Was that a re-edit? Was that NC-17 first? That is the question, uh, might it be? I think, but I think, I think you're tempting me with this one. I'm gonna go with Basic Instinct. You're yes! right, Link. Basic Instinct, most known for the infamous Sharon Stone leg crossing scene that you're talking about, was originally rated NC-17. The director of the film has never specifically said what he had to cut to attain the R rating, though he did say that he replaced things from different angles, which gives us a pretty good clue. Interestingly, the original rating of GMM was NC-17 until we got a desk. 
Mm. Right. You would, you would love to look. <laughs> I mean, there, get a load of what's not a lot of space desk. right there, but it's a. <laughs> to tell yeah. them about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's C 17 from this angle, let me tell Woo! you. Uh, All right. There what was an one? ice pick. She had an ice pick. She grabbed an ice pick, if I remember correctly. You remember, you remember all the good parts. I haven't seen many movies, so I remember the ones I've seen. All right, speaking of NC-17, the X rating was originally an official rating used by the MPAA until they decided to replace it with the brand new NC-17 okay. rating in order to distance legitimate films from being associated with pornography. Hmm. What year did the MPAA's X rating get changed to NC-17? Was it hmm. 1980 or 1990. Definitely don't, I don't remember any talk of this in, in our 80s experience. It would be the type of thing that we would, we would have talked about, NC-17, NC-17. I remember we seeing all, it. We talked about X. I remember Triple seeing X. it, but I didn't know that it, you know, I wasn't like, oh, this is a new thing. I think it, I think it was the early 90s. He's on a roll, ladies two and gentlemen. Two. Female nudity. Now, fun fact. Boogie, That's just a word I use to celebrate now. <laughs> female nudity. Boogie Nights got away with an R rating despite showing full frontal male genitalia because Dirk Diggler's Wiggler was a prosthetic. And that's why we use a prosthetic desk because we could never get away with showing real wood on this show. I mean, come on now, who do you think we are? A prosthetic Wiggler. <laughs> That got a that got a sigh from from uh, the lady with the lovely voice. So that's um they're reusable that way. It's, it's kind of like bait when you're fishing. Like if you use a, oh god, if you yeah. use a you yeah. use, use a rubber worm. Yep, you can reuse it, and then somebody else can use it. Right, the you next just, guy just yank it out of the fish's mouth and reuse it. Okay, you're on a roll, but uh, briefly we want to you know we've been talking about the podcast Ronstadt. That's dropping on Tuesday. Yeah, it we is. We want to share some other podcast news. There's a mm -hmm. new chat show you should check out called Distractable, hosted by our friend Markiplier. Now, both of these podcasts are coming to you from a brand new studio uh, called Wood Elf that we and Mark and Plier, Mark and Plier, <laughs> that's what I call him. We've gotten real close. Mark and Plier. He splits them into Mark and Plier. <laughs> right. We've put together a studio called Wood Elf, and we've got some other really cool shows coming to you from amazing creators that we know you'll enjoy. Yeah, a little bit more information about Wood Elf real quick. It's a new label from Q Code, which is famous for immersive scripted shows like Ron Stat. Uh, and now they've got unscripted podcasts, including Distractable, from Markiplier, too. So if you're a fan of his, download Distractable on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, and watch out for all the new shows coming from Wood Elf as well. Yes. Now, moving away from sex and on to violence. Indiana. One particular Indiana Jones film includes a violent scene that, upon its release, upset parrots so much. Parrots? Parrots. parrots. Oh my God. Yeah, the parrots. Don't scare the parrots. Yeah, they're very sensitive. <laughs> and parrots so much they bombarded, bombarded the MPAA with complaints. The MPAA concluded that because the PG-rated film wasn't graphic enough to warrant an R rating, a new middle ground rating should exist. Thus came the PG-13 <laughs> rating. So which graphic Indiana Jones moment Temple of spawned Doom. I know the creation one. of the PG-13 rating? It's Temple of Doom. And this is the first movie I remember seeing in the theater. My dad took me and I was just petrified. I mean, you, it's not every day you see a man's heart get ripped out of his chest. Okay, well that is one of the options. But the other option is uh, from Raiders of the Lost Ark which is when the people's faces melted off when the Ark of the Covenant was opened. I know it's, I know it's the Temple of Doom, so I'm going with uh, A, ripping a man's heart out. This game's too easy for the Linkster, even though he's never seen movies. I I've seen that one. Uh, the PG-13 rating came to thanks to like that this. particular scene when the priest uh, Mala uh, Ram ripped out the man's heart. Now, interestingly, Temple of Doom retained its PG rating until this day but the first PG-13 rating went to uh, Red Dawn a few months later. So it instigated it, it but instigated it didn't it. get yeah, it. Yeah. And for what it's worth, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Boobs has always been rated triple X. They stack so high. Yeah, maybe I can get the crisp dollar and this. That's not how it works. Uh, okay, you know what? If, if you get a queen sweep, you get both. Yeah. Sticking with movie violence, the 2009 movie Taken. Alarm parents everywhere with its depiction of kidnapping and intense dad on bad guy violence. Mm -hmm. It boasts a kill count of over 30 people, but is still somehow rated PG-13. Which of these gratuitous acts of violence did not happen in Taken? A, 
Liam Neeson stabs a guy multiple times with a broken champagne bottle. Ooh. B, Neeson tortures a guy with electricity. C, Neeson stabs a guy in the junk with a kitchen knife. Ouch. D, Neeson bludgeons a guy's face with a fire extinguisher. So, do I have a 50-50 chance? Is A and B one? I'm saying this block or that block, or do no, I have no, to? No, 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 you, you, you gotta get the exact answer right. We just couldn't reconfigure our whole board for this game. That would mm. be like the MPAA, like coming up with a new rating. It's too, too much trouble. Mm. I kinda like stabbing a guy multiple times with a broken champagne bottle. That seems crazy. A. The queen sweep has died. Ah. No, in the junk. He does not with stab a, a man knife. in the penis with a knife and taken. And you know what? Even though he's a deranged, bloodthirsty killer, you know what he hasn't done? He's never thrown a dart at one of his employees. Mm. Who would do that? I threw a dart at the board. Chase just happened to be in between me and it. In 1970, the MPAA ratings for films were G, general audiences, M, mature audiences with parental discretion advised, R, under 17 requires an accompanying adult, and X. But prior to 1970, the age requirement for viewing an R-rated movie was different than 17. What was the age requirement to see an R-rated movie before 1970? Was it A, 16, or B, 18? I, yeah, I, I think they were being more restrictive and then they loosened it. Man, that's hard to do, you know? Hard to do. It's, it, I can't imagine them loosening the restriction. Yeah. I think they would only go up, mm. make it harder to watch these movies as the movies got crazier. It's like, man, people getting stabbed in the junk with champagne. Uh. So I'm saying 16. You're right, Back Link. on track. Now, we have very little information why they changed it from 16 to 17, but from personal experience, I can tell you, a lot of things can happen to you when you're 16 to turn you from a boy to a man. Or from 16 to 17, like time. I was just talking about leg hair. Oh. And now, obscenity. Yes. If a film uses the F word in reference to having sex. And what is that? Uh, the F word? I'll tell you later. Uh, if it's if in reference to having sex, there's an automatic R rating. And there's a general rule that if the F word is said more than once in a film, even with non-sexual connotations, it will almost always mean an R rating. However, after an appeal by the filmmakers, the MPAA made an exception for one particular film which contains more than one F-bomb. Is it A, The Martian, or B, Anchorman? I've seen The Martian, and I think I've seen Anchorman. <laughs> I think you might have. I mean, I, I've definitely seen parts of Anchorman. I remember being surprised by a couple of things in The Martian. Uh, a couple um, things. Didn't Ben Affleck show up in The Martian? He doesn't have to be in every single Matt Damon. Or was it Matthew McConaughey? Who was it that showed up out there? Are you thinking about Interstellar, or are you thinking about? <laughs> yeah, I think you're thinking about oh, yeah. Interstellar. Yeah, Ben Affleck, I mean, uh, the guy who's Ben Affleck's friend, uh, Matt Damon, he showed up in Interstellar after The Martian. It's like, yeah. why are you still here on Mars? That's All movies are not connected. Uh, the Martian. Oh, after all that, you're gonna go with The Martian. Multiple F-bombs. Link, you are right. Yes, in The Martian, Matt Damon's character uses the F word twice, once when performing surgery on himself, and once more when he says, F you, Mars, which was actually- Very comedic. It was an ad lib from Damon, and interestingly, you know, once a year, Mars gets very, very close to the Earth. They call it Mars Close Approach Day. And my, my family and I celebrate by going out into the front yard and yelling, F you, Mars! Join us. <laughs> Link, you got five out of six. I'm so impressed. You either uh, get the crisp $1 bill, or- I can't, I can't accept this, because I gotta go with this box, y'all. Can I open it now? Yeah. Stevie? Please. Shall I? Please. Oh, <laughs> there's no head in there. Oh. Oh, it's nasty. I wish I knew what he said in the movie so that I could be saying it right now, but I was too scared to listen as a child. I think it was F.U. Mars. Doom, doom. Congratulations, Link, and thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. F.U. Mars! You know what time it is. Hello, my name is Josh from Charlotte, North Carolina and it is time to spin the wheel of mythicality. 
Things getting crazy in Charlotte. Hope he didn't break those cool glasses. Click the top link to find out which movies are too uncomfortable to watch with your parents in Good Mythical Movie. And to find out where the Will of Mythicality is gonna land. Add some scientific magic to your Mythical Mug collection with the GMM Heat Activated Mug, available now at mythical.com.